Hello! In this video, MVCC Libraries and MVCC Career Services have teamed up to talk about professional email etiquette. Email rules are based upon the business letters which they have mostly replaced and are much more formal than the rules around everyday forms of communication like texting or social media. Language and formatting that is appropriate for one is inappropriate for the other. So let's start with some quick tips. Include a subject line that accurately summarizes your point. You want the person receiving your email to know at a glance what your email is about. It's also important to note that some email programs may mark emails sent without a subject line as spam so your reader never receives them. Be formal. Address someone by their title and last name unless they specifically tell you otherwise. Use complete sentences, including proper capitalization and punctuation. Avoid abbreviations, acronyms, or emoji. Be polite and avoid sarcasm or jokes, as these may not translate in written text. Be clear and concise. Get to the point quickly. The person you're contacting is probably busy. Be positive and show initiative. Reread what you've written before you send it to make sure that it makes sense. When possible, use a computer with a full keyboard to write professional emails, rather than a mobile device like a phone or tablet. This makes it easier to use correct spelling and punctuation, and encourages you to use a more formal tone than you might associate with typing on your phone. So now let's look at an example. Say that you know that you're going to miss class on Thursday, and you want to let your instructor, Mo Hawk, know. If Mo were your friend and you had to cancel plans, you would probably text them something like, sorry, gotta cancel, car broke. That's great for texting someone you know well, but it's not considered polite or professional when emailing someone who isn't a friend or family member. Remember to include a short descriptive subject line. You want your reader to have some idea of what your email will say before they open it. In this case, something like, missing class today, car trouble. In the body of your email, remember to include a greeting and to keep it formal. Most instructors will tell you how they wish to be addressed on the first day of class or in their syllabus. When in doubt, use Professor last name. So in this case, we would say, Good morning, Professor Hawk. In your message, you want to remember to use complete sentences and to get to the point quickly. In this case, we might say something like, I will not be able to come to class today. My car won't start. When applicable, it's good to show initiative, what you've already done or plan to do about the situation. In this case, you might say something like, I'm going to get notes from Jose, and I plan to stop by your office hours if I have questions. My brother should have the car fixed by next class. Also remember to ask for what you need. Something in this case like, can you please give Jose an extra copy of the assignment for me? Once you finish the body of your paper, include some kind of formal sign-off. Something like, thank you for your time, sincerely, or I look forward to hearing from you. In your signature, include your full name and whatever other information your reader might need to reach you. When emailing your instructor, for example, particularly at the beginning of the semester when they might not know all their students' names yet, it might be helpful to include which course you're in. Once you've written the email, take a minute to read over it. Check for spelling and grammar errors. Try to read it as if you are the person receiving it. Does it make sense? Does it portray you as a positive, proactive person? At first, writing like this can seem like learning a different language, but with practice it will become much more natural. Want more advice about presenting yourself professionally or preparing for your career? Contact Career Services. Want more tech tips or research help? Contact a librarian. 